I'm Melanie Helmke, a teacher in the dental hygiene program at Milwaukee Area Technical College. We are going to continue identifying common dental diseases and conditions of trauma on dental radiographs. Here we see calculus. It appears radiopaque on the x-ray. Can you find other areas of calculus? The density of calculus determines whether it is seen on an x-ray as well as the angle. This is the patient's right side on the bite wing. The arrow to your left points to, or really is up a little bit from a radiolucency incipient decay. Incipient decay is less than halfway into the enamel. Can it remineralize or will it need a filling? The arrow to your right points to an area where the caries appears to be more than halfway through the enamel. This is no longer incipient, it is C2. This is tooth number 30. We have advanced decay more than halfway into the dentin. It is a C4 caries classification on radiographs. Above number 30 is tooth number three. Can you see the radiolucency next to the opacity of the restoration? Recurrent caries are next to an existing restoration. This is tooth number 20. The arrow points to the recurrent caries. On tooth 21, there's a class five cervical restoration with recurrent caries around that. Above, tooth number 11 on the distal, 12 on the distal, tooth 13, distal, cervical, mesial, there are recurrent caries also. Tooth number 30 has occlusal caries as seen as a radiolucency along the dentino enamel junction. Notice that the enamel is intact, therefore x-rays are crucial for observing and finding occlusal caries. Is this a C1, 2, 3, or 4 radiographic caries classification? What letter is the primary tooth in the maxillary arch? Notice the proximal caries on the mesial. This primary tooth is letter K with distal proximal caries. We would not call this deciduous decay. It's just distal proximal caries on a deciduous tooth. As we look at 12 and 13 above, the overlapping of the two teeth show a radiolucency around the area of overlap. This is called mock effect and is not caries. The arrow indicates an overhanging restoration, an amalgam restoration. These overhangs are too large to remove with instruments and probably the tooth would need to be crowned. We see the overhang on the distal of this tooth, 13, also on 12, distal of 14, and distal of 21. Notice that apical to the overhang that the arrow points to on 13, there is a cratering of bone above the restoration. Is there a better type of x-ray that would show the bone loss on this slide? This tooth has a periapical abscess. Notice that there is a large area of caries. The crown is almost entirely destroyed. Radiolucencies at the apices of teeth can also be due to a cyst or a granuloma. Notice the large white area in the crown, and that is a pulp stone. Tooth number 32 is an impacted third molar. Will it ever erupt properly? No. It is also known as ectopic eruption, erupting out of position. What are some problems that could occur with this tooth position? The permanent maxillary canines are commonly or not unusually impacted or ectopically erupting. The primary canine is present, letter H. Notice the attrition on the incisal edge, the large bulkiness on the cervical of the crown, and the shorter root. 
This root tip is in soft tissue. Usually we see root tips as radial opacities in bone where extractions have occurred. Notice the rampant caries present. Tooth number 14 has supra erupted to fill the place where the caries have eradicated tooth structure on the mandibular teeth. The dotted line represents the benchmarked CEJ. Notice that the arrows point to the bone and it is not parallel with the benchmark CEJ, it is at an angle. We call this vertical or angular bone loss. Although the arrow points to an overhanging amalgam restoration, notice that the alveolar crestal bone has been destroyed. This is known as horizontal bone loss, documented as loss of crestal lamina dura, or crestal bone loss, or loss of alveolar crest. Furcation involvement is bone loss in the area of the furcation of the roots and appears radial lucent. Notice that this is the slide we originally saw with calculus. What type of bone loss is on the mesial of number 19? How would you identify the bone change between the premolars 20 and 21? Notice the X from the vertical changes of buccal and lingual bone between 21 and 22. Tooth number 21 shows external root resorption or root resorption. When we compare the length of tooth number 21's root to the length of the root for tooth number 20, we will notice that the root is shorter and blunt this is an indication of external root resorption. The arrow points to internal tooth resorption. The radiolucency results from the tooth resorbing, the walls of the pulp are destroyed, and the dentin is destroyed from within the tooth. If we examine the tooth externally or clinically, we will find that there is no pathology. Everything on that tooth is intact. The x-ray, however, shows the internal resorption. The cause is idiopathic or unknown. We also see a great example of the zygomatic process, the u-shape or v-shape of the anatomy in the upper part of this slide. Tooth number 13 shows dilaceration, or a crooked root. Condensing osteitis is an opacity at the apex of the tooth. If we do a pulp test, we find that the tooth is non-vital. A similar opacity is known as sclerotic bone. Sclerotic bone can occur anywhere in the bone, but if it is at the apex of a tooth, and we do a vitality test, the tooth is vital for sclerotic bone. The arrow points to tooth number 28. The tooth has a crooked root. We call this curve of the root dilaceration. It occurs during morphodifferentiation in tooth development. 